Welcome back to the Intel Stream Masters. We're here for season X, as we marked it in Shenzhen, China. We're now in Cologne, Germany. And joining me on the desk this time is, of course, Rotterdam and Pig. And we'll be talking some StarCraft in a second. But if you guys want to join in on the conversation, make sure to hashtag IEM for every tweet that you make, because that's what we do when we tweet about it. You guys should join in as well. Boys, big game coming up here. Rhett versus Euthermal. Looking forward to this one. Roddy. Drogo. Oh, Drogo, sorry. Roddy, Dutch pride. Yeah, a little bit of Dutch pride, a little bit of Protoss pride, as of course I am a Protoss player by heart. Uh, very curious about this one, because they went up against each other in DreamHack Valencia, the most recent DreamHack. And Red Who was, won, Roddy? Red was able to win that one, two to nothing, and I remember that we were casting Intel Extreme Master Shenzhen that weekend, so I didn't see a whole lot, but I went over to his hills, I was like, wow, Red 2-0 that that's really solid, I didn't really see that one coming, so... I, I looked at the head to heads, they, they played twice actually, including that one, uh, and it was a 2 0 previous time, just an online tournament, but still 2 0. Great head to head record, and you know, that plays into factor a little bit here. I think another thing, too, people are starting to point out that Drogo's not yeah. in the best of shape today. He's feeling tired, he's not playing as well as he could be. Tilo pointed out in the winner's interview that he, yeah. when he saw Drogo lounging around, he was like, okay, this is mine. <laughs> That's going to play in here for Red 2. Oh, yeah, and I think something we haven't talked about as much, but it's coming into effect is. Drogo is still a newer player. He's not as experienced as someone like Rhett, but he's kind of blasted into, into not just relevance, but the top of the foreign scene. He just got second at Asus Rogue, and when you get up to that level, suddenly everyone takes you so seriously. They're all studying your builds. There's so many of your VODs out there. And if, you're not, if you don't have a lot of variety, a lot of range, people can find ways to kind of blind counter you and take these advantages before they even get into the game. They like know how to take advantage. So I think Drogo has got to mix things up a little bit and maybe be a little bit more aggressive in his play or a little bit less predictable. And let's not forget, you mentioned experience. Like experience is one thing, it can help in going into series like this, but this is also the first time ever in Drogo's career that he's going from event to event to event to event. Like Red has been doing that for pretty much 10 years, so he kind of knows what it's like. For Drogo, this is probably a new experience, you know, one moment you're in Krefeld, then you're in Finland again, then you're over here, yeah, uh, yeah. probably went to DreamHack as well. That's a lot of tournaments and that's something he's never done before, like this amount of traveling. So maybe that's why he's looking a little exhausted. Maybe that's all coming into play. Yeah, I mean, there's, you know, the exhaustion from the traveling, the not eating properly, the not being on a regular schedule, and then you've got the lack of practice in between too, because you just don't feel like it as yep. you're trying to get back into it. Uh, I, mean, I mean, you always talk about it whenever you stream, Roddy, yeah. the number one Twitch stream, if you didn't know. <laughs> um, <laughs> always talks about it, that when you come back from events, I, I, I suck. Like, hey, yeah, I know this. Like, every, <laughs> every single time I'm home, I grind hard. And, like, right when I was like, okay, I'm still not good, but this is kind of respectable. Then you go away again for eight days. Now, at least these guys play a little bit because they've got practice rooms. But, yeah, you do yeah, lose yeah. out on valuable practice time. Like, just sitting at home, you're often going to be a lot better than when you go from event to event right. to event. There are very few people that I think of Hyun and MC that can really keep an assistant, uh, consistent level while traveling so much. But even with those big guys, eventually you would really see that it caught up to them. Well, let's talk a little bit about Yos here, um, Rhett. He has and has had his ups and downs throughout his career, and his career has been a long one too, not just in StarCraft 2, but in, in Brood War 2, is that it kind of comes in momentum spurts, if that makes sense. If yep. he's feeling good and he's playing good, he, he starts to really show it in results. And right now he seems to be going through one of those again. I mean, he's starting to get back into WCS. He played in Premier League. He made it to Toronto. Um, he just got off the back of a week training with his team as well, and things are going well for this guy right now, Roddy. No, absolutely. Uh, it's really weird, and I totally agree. His career in StarCraft 2 has definitely been a roller coaster ride early on. You know, 2011 was pretty much the year of Red. Back then, he was the European champion. He won yeah, the biggest yeah. tournament in 2011 for Europeans. And even in 2012, often top four to DreamX and stuff. And 2013, still a little bit. 2014 was an off year. 2015, definitely coming back. But now, over the past few weeks, it's a little bit more disappointing again. Uh, mm -hmm. Like he skipped out on Home Story Cup because he felt he was going to too many events. I was like, hey man, you're doing well now. Like, why don't you just ride out the train? And then you could see it in WCS Premier League losing against Hero Marine. The result was a little bit deceiving, a three to one victory in which he should have won at least three out of four games. Like that's not normal. Uh, so we'll see, like on one moment he was up again. But now over the last two weeks, he's been going down a little bit. So now he's going to really stop that downfall and making it into 
the group stage of uh, Gamescon over here, that would be a very good moment for him. And moving on now to uh, PT Drogi, you can see on screen here, a little bit jaded, I suppose, after the travel, you said, feeling tired today. We'll see how well he performs. <laughs> I think he's Fred. getting tired of everyone talking about him being tired. <laughs> God damn it, guys. He's like, guys, just shut up, let me play my game. <laughs> well, hopefully he can play his game, because uh, this can be a difficult match pick. No, Teo's such a solid player, though. He's, uh, he's going to come into this and... I guess what you've, you've got to focus on when you're in this situation is I've been saying, hey, maybe get out there and change it up a bit. But when you're tired, it becomes so hard to play outside of your standard builds. And really, I think Drogo is just going to need to scout very well, but stick to what he knows and really commit hard to it. If I were him, if I was his coach right now, I'd get in there, I'd say, throw out a seven game. Throw out something like really aggressive, at least one of these games, try to get some momentum. You know, uh, Red is kind of a weird play though in PvZ. Like, Red has been very vocal about how much he dislikes this matchup at the moment, that he thinks it's very difficult. And whenever I whenever I watch Red right now, or even when I play against him, like, he's the guy who proxies hatcheries, you know, he's, like, he's, he's willing to think outside of the box. He's willing to create chaos. And from that point on, right. he's probably okay with playing this matchup, but but he's not going to let Petit Drogo just sit back and get all his sentries up and get all his stalkers out because if he go completely plays the game that Petit Drogo wants to play, the game that he has so much experience right. in, because Petit Drogo is even approaching PvZ in general saying, it's okay if my opponent knows what I'm going to do. That's like a Terran telling you he's going to go stim bio. You know, it still comes down to execution, and that's how he feels about this PvZ. Yeah, it seems like a common trend with the French players to very, play very similar. And in recent times, more so that Aces RG tournament, people started to play against that and are now yeah. starting to adapt a lot more to their play. You think that's going to come, well, it has to really, from Red. Uh, I think Red's going to go in here knowing what Drogo likes to do. Drogo's got two core builds. They're his favorite openings, very macro-oriented and very defensive. And I think that, uh, you know, mixing in some all-ins, like Lil Bo is a player who plays very similarly, but he throws more mm -hmm. aggression in there, tries to mess his opponents up. If if Teo, if Drogo can actually do that, I think he's going to take his, his play very strong here. And if you can put the pressure on Red to be worried, what's going to come yeah. my way? If there's that surprise factor or that what if, that can actually put the momentum back in his favor. It's really funny though, because PvZ has traditionally always been a matchup where it's so important for the Protoss to switch it up. It's so important for the Protoss to keep the Zerg guessing, keep the Zerg in the dark. And he's like the first Protoss ever that's like, no, this is what I do. And it doesn't matter if Zerg knows it, because that's just, it's good. And and it all comes down to execution. Well, uh, almost ready for the game. What's the key to success for Rhett then? If Drogo's going to do what he's going to do, what is Rhett going to do? <laughs> oh, I think Rhett's got to look for little tells, little things like, hey, if there's a fast sentry, it's probably a fast stargate. If there's a fast stalker, probably a four gate pressure. Little tells like that are going to allow him to telegraph Drogo's style from very early on and hard counter it and really toe that line of greed, which Rhett's the master of. Play the game of drones, get your drone count up there, and then overwhelm in the mid game. What's up, Chan? Anything else to add to that, Roddy? Uh, I think the most important thing for Red is to maybe create unusual scenarios in the game. Like, just do something crazy early on, get that game going that he likes to play, where the Protoss timings are a little bit off and everything is going to be a little bit different. I think then it's going to be fine for Red. If nothing happens in the first six, seven minutes, then I'm starting to get worried for Red. All right, so you, you've kind of shown who you'd like to favor, but nailing down predictions and scores, can you, can you do this for me, boys? Oh, I'm going to go with Drogo 2-1. I think it's going to be a really close series. I probably wouldn't bet money on it, but I've got mm -hmm. faith in just the strength of his mechanics, the strength of his builds. I would like to say I wouldn't bet money on it, but I bet money on everything. But <laughs> <laughs> No, I, uh, it's very difficult to predict, but maybe a red 2-1. All right. Well, uh, thank you very much, guys. I don't like to weigh my opinion because I'm always right and I don't want to show everyone. Uh, you guys can do it in the Fantasy League, though, so remember that. Don't forget about it. But for now, it's time to head to the casting team for one of the final games of Open Bracket 2. All right. Welcome back. Yes, as we have now this series on the way. I've got to ask you a question, yes. actually. Answer. Uh, and it's a very, very important question. And my question to you is, which of these two does the faceless god favor? Ah. <sighs> That's a tough question, but I believe it would be Petit Drogo. Ah, okay. Yeah. With that kind of name, how could you possibly not be, you know, favored by the faceless god? Oh, so, so, thank you, thank you for that. Vala Mogulis. No, there you go, perfect. Do you know the reply to that? Uh, I can't remember off the top of my head. Why do I not remember? I Someone know. tweeted this guy. I know. Yeah, you That's get, really you bad, because I read the books as well. <laughs> yeah, you read the book. <laughs> so Vala Doharis or something? Vala Doharis? Something like that. I think, yeah. Uh, we'll go with that. I uh, should know it too, because I apparently look like that guy. Yeah. To a T, so. Yeah. Well, you know. 
These things happen. Anyway. anyway, anyway, Rhett, Rhett, Rhett. What do we have to say about him? He's the guy who, you know, unfortunately for him, in the last series of WCS, he, he didn't quite make it. You know, Hero Marine That's obviously right. showed a great series against him. Uh, but going up against Petit Drogo here, TLO mentioned it himself, mm. has been showing weaknesses today. Yeah, that's true. I mean, yeah, that, that whole uh, factor about him being quite tired, which was quite visible as we did see him over when we were looking at his uh, player camera. There it is there, like uh, having a little bit of a snooze before the match. So that could come into play. Mm. Certainly so. I mean, when you're tired and you're going to play StarCraft, that's a big problem there. Yeah, it is a bit of a problem. Um, of course, he's been in a situation where he did so well at the Asus ROG recently mm. over in Finland. Uh, and for a lot of people on looking, that's probably going to be weighing on his mind because he has expectations on him now. He yeah. really does have expectations on him. Something that has probably never happened to this guy before. Well, you know, uh, speaking to him earlier, he's also very confident in himself. I certainly the impression I got from it anyway. Yeah. So I'm like, he's kind of like, he's at a place where he's very confident, he's doing well, but is it too much too soon? Like, is it too many tournaments? He's going from one tournament to another, which the guys in the panel were talking about. Uh, this guy may have just play, played a little too much, traveled a little too much. He didn't have enough downtime where he can just sit back and start practicing again and get back into that shape and then go out again and try again. Yeah, yeah. Well... It's uh, certainly certainly a kind of dynamic series how these things go out because of course Rhett is the guy that you know likes to be able to get to the mid game, get to the late game, absolutely like that. Uh, and whilst you have some guy like Petit Drogo here who has shown real like tendencies to be very very aggressive. So you're for, if you're in the Zerg's shoes there, and mm. you have been many many times going up against aggressive Protoss, yeah. Fear? What, what, are you, what are you suspecting? There's always a natural fear as a Zerg player. You, you're afraid of all these kind of all-ins they can do, especially if you're a very macro-oriented player like Rhett, because he, he loves the drones, he loves to get to that healthy uh, point where he can just mass a huge yeah. army after an economy is, has boomed. Um, you just got to be careful, man. Like, I know for sure Red has been speaking to TLO. TLO taken down Petit Drago earlier. It's like, okay, this is what I did, this is what I was expecting. Mm, yeah. This guy doesn't change up his style too much, so... Maybe Red's going to be you know, expecting the same sort of thing, just being very careful, doesn't drone too hard, looks for those pylons, looks for the, the, the sort of tells that he might be taking to. Just play a careful game, but a smart game at that. You know, can't be too careful, can't be too greedy. Yeah. That fine line in between. That's a great thing to have. Like it, When you're in one of these kinds of brackets and your your teammate has done oh so well against their opponent that mm. you're about to play against. Yeah. So uh, definitely a lot of information to kind of be fed through from that, I think. Yeah, it can certainly get in the head of Petit Drago as well. It's like, well, I'd lost to his teammate. Yes. His teammate's clearly going to tell him everything that happened. And that can come into play. And maybe we'll see a whole different style from Petit Drago this time. All right. Well, we're getting good to go. Coder is going to be our first map here in this ZVP as we're going to be getting into our first game pretty soon. And let's jump right on in to game number one here. As we have spawning up to the top left-hand corner, it is our blue Protoss. Representing my insanity, it is Petit Drogo. Had a lot of recent success in PvZ. Not finding it today so far, though. And down to the bottom right-hand corner, his opponent. In the red, representing Team Liquid, it is Rhett. Who in past months has really, I, I think, more so stepped up his game. I mean... I agree. I completely agree yeah. with that. I, I was always very impressed with his uh, play in recent times. May not have success in WCS this time around, but He's been looking fantastic. Yeah. I've, uh, I've been really inspired by his uh, his ZVT especially. I mean, even that series against Hero Marine in WCS could mm. have gone another way. It could have gone Rat's way. Right, the right. The games that he lost were pretty closely lost. Mm. It, wasn't, it wasn't very fine cut in the slightest. So, Rat got a tough opponent. Definitely just got a tough opponent in WCS. Uh, and I'm expecting in 2016 onwards, you know, expecting to see him, him there once again, no doubt. Oh, I hope so. So a little bit of a pause, the screen. No slip up, no craziness. Just going to be Rhett heading over towards him, taking his expansion first against uh, Petit Drogo, who did open up Gateway first on the other side of things. So when you're playing against Gateway first specifically here as a Zerg, what are you looking out for? 
Uh, well, you know, the uh, the attack comes a lot earlier. Mm -hmm. That's one thing for sure. Uh, if you don't see a forge at the front like a lot of Protosses are doing these days, it means, you know, you got to be a little bit more careful of aggression early on. You, you can still get away with, like, a double hatch before pool. Like, you can take that very greedy route because you aren't going to be cannon, but it also depends on how aggressive the Protoss wants to be from that gateway. We do see some Protoss want to, like, Chrono boost out Zealots and Stalkers early, apply pressure with the Mothership Core as well. And there's all sorts of things you can do, you just got to be really on top of it, which is something Rhett's going to have to do in spades against this kind of player uh, that is known for his constant aggression. Yeah. Using a lot of, if I recall correctly, like 4-gate aggression plays and things like that. Stargate, yeah. Mm. But we do see, you know, he scouts out that it was hatched first, doesn't, decides not to mine gas, said throws down the Nexus, throws down a second gas a bit later. So he's kind of like this, this interesting economic kind of style where he does get the gateway early, he does get the gas early, but won't use it unless he, uh, he, he sees a different kind of build other than a hatchery first. Yeah, well, for now, Mr. Rhett is going to be, you know, taking precautions, making sure he is in the clear and in the okay as the drone's going to head over towards the third base, plant himself down a hatchery and just play pretty greedy by the looks of things. Yeah, I mean, why not? And it is red after all. I'd be surprised if there was anything <laughs> else going on. It's like the opposite of what Bly would do, pretty much. Yeah, basically. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the great thing about StarCraft, right? Because there are that many possibilities. Mm. To see these kinds of styles come out from people, uh, even these Zerglings, just fanning out now, making sure he is going to be A-OK -okay against any sneaky probes that have come out towards the map. Yeah, safety first against this kind of player. Against Drogo, you want to make sure there is no pylon for that 4-gate to get underway or, or anything like that. And we do see a Sulker as a follow-up here. Just going to help out. Scout, shut down the Overlord scouting, which is the number one sort of key to, to stop happening so you can actually get the tech that you want undetected. And I'm wondering what Drogo wants to do with this at, at this stage. Is he going to throw down those extra gateways? Hmm. Is, well, there's a sentry, so, well, we'll see. He does like his sentries, that's for sure. He does, he does like his like sentries. Uh, and they can be quite, quite evil, to say the least, as for now, Petit Drogo sending himself that stalker up towards the top to try and clear out the third, and it comes right back just as the Ling moves in to that location. Oh, so yeah. the little loop-de-loop -loop here is oh, a little bit of a shot. Oh, so my smart. God. He sees all three. He knows it is that 4 gate oh. pressure. He's going to even get in. Doesn't really have to, but he, he might as well, you know, have a little nibble on the probes. The funny thing is, is that Ling didn't even need to do that loop-de-loop. -loop. The Overlord in total saw everything anyway. That, but is, that is a good point as well. Yeah. Never use that Mothership Core to try and zone it out. So uh, we are seeing a pretty late Roach Warren here though, which could be a little bit scary because Warp Gate's about to finish up here. You can't really afford to lose an Overlord either. If he gets Supply Blocked here, could be uh, in very bad shape to defend it. Starting to make yeah. links and drones as well behind this. Yeah, the Mothership Core enters the fray as well and pushes Ooh. away this, uh, the Queen. So he gets himself a guaranteed Overlord kill, which is nice. The oh. Zealots positioned itself so well, and the Zerglings weren't even attacking. They were just on move command against that. Yeah, I think he was trying to go for a surround on the Zealot, but it was just in a perfect place. Yeah. Roach One's going to finish on time, though, before any real threats on the map. We are seeing more sentries come in now, but not too much damage behind it either. And look at that. Extra gas is added. So Drago, you know, looks like he, he's keen to transition from here. Mm. Selling a story. Selling a story. Selling just, it well. Yeah, very, very well. And doesn't need really to do much more aggressive maneuvers here. He can just do this, force out a lot of units. 43 workers against 44. The current roaches that are popping maybe end up being completely useless for now because he may never even engage them. Yeah, looks like he's going to start to work on yeah. a few roaches. Catches very nicely them. done. Catches them early, and that's the important thing, especially with force fields like that, making sure they're going to be pinned up against the wall. And the one thing that Rep really wanted to do, you know, he had done that, that Overlord in the natural. If he actually scattered the gases, it would have given away a lot as well. If he had have actually sacked the Overlord, could have helped. But as I said, the Overlord gets a scout on that third Nexus going up as well. Yeah, important. The, the important part of all of that was he understood that there wasn't that much of a commitment to this. He saw the the number of units that was out here and just decided to go back to 14 drones while all this was going on. But look how well Petit Drogo has been able to save the majority of his sentries against that Roach Force. Yeah, he actually cleared it up and he's staying on the map because he has the option of going home at any point with the recall. So he can apply the pressure. Red's making eight more Roaches, but he also droned up very nicely on that third base especially. Oh, yeah. Did well with that, did well with that. He judged the situation brilliantly, did Rhett, to make sure that he wasn't going to fall too far behind. 60 workers to 53, despite that little uh, aggressive maneuver coming out. 
Now adding the gases. So Red's staying on top of everything. I, I'm curious to see what his next step is. He's, he's going to go into Hydras from here. Maybe play that sort of Roach Hydra Viper eventually sort of game. Is he just planning to deflect whatever comes next? Because surely he knows that it's Drogo. And, and he is going to go for some sort of aggression behind this as well. And look how many sentries that is. The sentries never end. Never <laughs> end. It's just this constant march of small little baubles as they will send themselves a hallucination forwards. Capturing a queen to start things off and once all of the beams join together, it makes about the damage of a, a stalker or two. Great. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. Oh, recalls oh. out actually. Interesting. That's going to give Rep more time to get out what he wants. You know, going for 1-1 one, one Ling's Roach Speed at as well as an Infestation Pit. I like that. Maybe going to Infestus from here wouldn't be a bad choice considering the, the sentry count right now. If you get three fungals on that, you've killed a lot of sentry. And with the Infestation Pit out so early on, and the potential transition over to high for him as well, I mean, is is Rex still in a comfortable position here? Is he got to feel a little bit wary? The fact that Pedroga is building up towards that kind of baguette-style Protoss? Yeah, well, he's got to be a little worried about it, but I'm sure he's relieved that he did give up the, the pile and he did give up the position uh, there. He's pulling a snoot. He's pulling a snoot. He's not getting pathogen glands started up before those investors yeah, go. Yeah, he just wants them out ASAP and going straight into a high mm. from here. Looking for that Ultra Tech switch eventually. It's going to really be bad if he can secure a fourth base, get those eight gases up and running so he can support it quite easily, as well as the double upgrades. I do like where Red is right now, though. You know, he's, he's kind of got the map back. There's no pylons to really threaten him. There's no sort of form of harassment on the map. It's really about uh, Petit Drogo making that army and moving across once Blink and Plus 2 is finished. And those Hallucinate Phoenix pretty much saw exactly what they needed to see, but it's whether or not you were able to deal with it is the question, because he saw the Infestors popping out with a little bit lack of energy. He saw the fact that Hive is on the way, so he knows what he's going up against, but there's so many counter-attack potentials set up here for Rhett. Um, and that's kind of down the similar vein of what we saw him using against Hero Marine in WCS. He did go for a lot of counter-attacks to slowly stall out the game. Of course, different matchup, but the same rules can definitely apply. Certainly so, yeah. You, if you're up against this kind of uh, army and they're already in, at their base like if you ever fight, fight a protoss like this and you do have map control and you're going very ling heavy like the possibilities of counter attack are so strong yeah it's like red might be looking to actually have an attack here you know? he's like kind of gathering his army up again he does have the infestors as well mm, maybe he can launch something if he gets a good fungal that would be nice if he was able to pop all those sentries then good god that would be great for him but oh man at the moment just playing it slow He's just looking for it. There's always that recall ability as well, so he's never certain kills there, but will really soften up the army if he gets a nice fungal or two. And look at this, here we go. Attacking onto the high ground, forces the recall out, tries to lock things down with a fungal, and well, some of the sentries actually did take some damage, I believe, under that fungal. Yeah, a lot of them took a big chunk of damage. It's going to be harder for uh -oh. him to come down this ramp as well. Yeah, especially with these infestors in the position that oh, they're already in. Man. That's a great fungal to start things off. The Lings are going to try, try and come from the wraparound. Can't recall block out of there. Two Colossi are about to pop, and they do get into this fight very quickly. They actually melt the Lings that they're currently residing over. And blinking forwards, getting these infestors would be a great pickup for him, but that's still a lot of Lings and Roaches. Yeah, it's a lot of Lings. They're going to trade very efficiently with these Stalkers, but with those two Colossus coming out just in time, like, yeah. it, they just clean up everything because it's such a Ling-heavy army. It was a saving grace. If they hadn't have come out, what would have gone on? Yeah, it would have been a mess otherwise. Well, he's blinking forwards again, getting himself an Infestor, but realistically, what we're seeing from Rhett with the Ultralisks on the way, as well as Great Aspire, he is powering on. And there is a small window here where Petit Drogo has an okay army, but... Eventually, it will become a little bit more useless against the tech from here, from Rat. Certainly, so. I mean, when these all these ultras come out, he's only got Colossus with his gateway units, so he really needs to start throwing in some immortals if he wants to try and chunk down the ultras before they can do some real damage. He's got one so far, but uh, it's not going to be enough. Hmm. That army from Rat is looking scary. This is going to be a nice little hallway to fight in, at least for for Petit Trogo. Army moving towards the middle of the map, and he does see the ultralisk here with this. Doesn't want necessarily want to be sending one forge, but now he sees extra five. That Mothership Quad does not have energy for a recall at the moment, so he needs to buy some time in that choke point. He's actually sent his entire Ling Force over to go for the counter to deny that base, sacrificing this fourth base, no doubt, and I don't think he feels comfortable fighting up that choke. No. It's gonna look like he's just gonna let it go. It's gonna force the recall out, so the Mothership Core will stay with that energy for a while longer, I guess, but it's a nice little victory for Petit Drogo.
So he's going to just wait up there while he does get his tech up on three base. You know, he makes the units he has to, makes the yeah. immortals, and goes into Templar. I suppose the longer this army stays up here, the more time he is buying on the other side. I mean, yeah, Lings are threatening, but there we I'm go. Going to pull on back for now. In eight. Corrupt is behind this, so we can see a nice transition into Broodlord. So he's Red's really looking for this army. This, even though it's on three base, it's going to be such a destructive army against what Protoss does. There's a few units in that third base that are very stuck, and he's going to have to kill off buildings to actually get those out. There was a Colossus in there, Zealot, Sentry. Uh, so finally does clean all of that up. But Here we go. What does he have to counter this? Uh, the Blink Stalkers, I suppose. Yeah, but... I mean, Blink can do it if you've wiped out the rest of the ground army, but if he's blinking on top of Ultras and Lings mm. that have this upgraded, it's going to be a bit of a mess. Yeah, he could get sliced and diced. Not to mention there's Fungal as well, which is going to create a lot of problems yeah. here. I do like the army. I do like the idea that Red has uh, gone with here, but does he have too many units out of position at this point? It's hard to say. Big Ling run at uh, big Ling attack on the fourth. Oh, blinding cloud there onto. Actually, I think he may have killed one of his own stalkers off whilst trying to focus down those um, those those vipers. But that's a big, big set of fungal ghosts across this whole army. They are trying to blink backwards there. There's also some blinding clouds under that as well. The three ultralisk at the front are going to die off, but still there are the brood lords at the back, but they don't really have much more to complement them. Yeah, you know, there's still all the uh, uh, all the oh. colossus remain alive at least for now. This could change things up. Links coming from the back here just kind of soaking up all of this. If they can kill off the extra stalkers, there's no more anti-air here at all. The Lings have done the job. The Colossi are going to end up falling to Broodlings and Lings alone. There's more stalkers to the right-hand side on the right flank. They need to get some job done. They need to be able to kill off these Broodlords. Yeah. And they're going to try, but there's not enough. No, just simply not enough. Gets one. <laughs> Look at the Ling Remax as well. And plus no, no, a few no, Ultras no. on the way. They should be able to chase them down. This yeah. is looking scary here for T-Drogo. Dude, the... Uh, the constant link counters on the fourth was something that just put him so far ahead as well. Like, he hasn't got this fourth up once. It's been cancelled a couple times already, and Red's just playing such a smart game against this guy. Yeah, it's not like Red's economy has looked like, you know, uh, overwhelming either. Oh. It's mostly been on three bases, and he's just pursued back on, back on. He's been able to tech up super fast from there and always be one step ahead of his opponent at every single angle. Yeah, that's right. Might not want to waste all these links. He needs some buffer for these Broodlords, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> that was a bad blink forwards as well. Not the thing you want to be doing against no. Broodlords like that. And then from here, it's going to be such a hard fight. Now, Ultras to buffer for them as well. Oh, and if he loses those Robos, those Ultralisks may as well just wave goodbye to any hope that Petit Drogo has. Very, very difficult for him to continue on against this with the Broodlords laying siege to him. Well, here we go. More Stalkers warped in, so he's looking for that blink. Can he find it there? I don't think so. This is going to be difficult. The Broodlings are holding on against the Stalkers up towards the top. The Ultralisks are yeah. back. GG, came the ball and goes to red. Oh my goodness. That was that was quite He's got the, the download, man. He's yeah. he's really thought that out and he knew exactly what he had to do in that situation. Really Valiant smart play. play from Red. Very, very well done. Very well done. Not only against the initial aggression, and then really I think that was the most well, for me watching that game, that was like the most defining and important moment, which was yeah, he made a few roaches to counteract the idea that his opponent was going to be aggressive, but he really never overextended that kind of position. That's he right. got back into drones really, really fast on those three bases, still plowing out way with that economy. Yeah, that overlord was in a in a great position as well. You know, it saw the third nexus. It's like, okay, I can drone. I can just keep droning yep. from here. Just have enough units just so I can deflect this light harassment into recall. And from there, you know... Just played a great game. You're going to the Ling upgrades like that, having enough units on the map to constantly keep him in his base. The Petit Trogo couldn't move across the map when he wanted to with the plus two Blink Stalkers to really do much damage at all. And that Infestor uh, switch as well, great, great fungals, forcing him to recall again. Mm. Just, uh, yeah, Rep just constantly playing the smart, aggressive style. Yeah, there's been moments where we've seen that kind of transition to the infestation pit and then a lack of pathogen glands that have kind of, it's kind of fallen on its face flat because the Protoss has been able to hit that kind of window where, mm. okay, the infestors are pop, but they've got no energy and now you just die. Yeah. Um, but in this instance, it worked perfectly because of the counters that were set up, which... Mm. It, you know, you can have components to a, a machine, but unless they're all working in tandem with one another, the machine's not just going to function. And as we say in here in Germany, it is kaput. So, uh, <laughs> Rhett, Rhett is not kaput. He is doing very well so far. Certainly so. Not kaput here. <laughs> 
Um, I don't know much German, by the way. <laughs> so I'm going to go with the few words that I know. It's fantastic. Yeah, I, I love it. I'm learning as we go as well. You know, I didn't, I didn't know much German. <laughs> I was you even... don't need to. You don't live here. That's, it's okay. That's true. That's true. <laughs> well, I'm curious to see what map two is going to be. You know, that's going to tell another story as well as how these games are going to go, how aggressive t Drago is going to be and how Rec can play the map. You yep. know, we played that one nicely, but uh, not all maps are like that. You can't be that fluid with your counter attacks. It's not that easy. That is true. And Rhett, well, maybe just assessing the replay here. Uh, just going over many details or something like that. Not sure uh, what is delaying our second game, but we'll be in it very, very soon. Uh, and Rhett right now, looking good. Looking good against a player that a lot of people have big, big respect for here in the European scene. I mean, when it comes to France, you kind of have to have respect for the nation at the moment. You do. They have so many star players. They're constantly getting decent results. Uh, grand Finals with Asif's ROG is, is insane. Yeah. Coming from that, uh, you are feared at this point, especially after crushing like the likes of Hyun and having some pretty great games against Lucia as well. Mm. Mm. I do love the fact that in Germany you have glass bottles of water. That's like, that's insane. <laughs> yeah. That's insanity. There's nowhere else in the that's world. Cool. Nowhere else in the world like that. To be fair, in England they banned them. I think. Really? Yeah, because uh, people. Uh, the in, English people are slightly hooligan-ish. <laughs> I suppose Australians are dissimilar, actually, now that I think about it. People get bottled. <laughs> <laughs> to a certain degree, it yeah. It happens, so man. They give you plastic. But uh, we don't have soccer in Australia. Basically, oh, really. everyone in Germany is too friendly. Like, I, I, No, I say too friendly. Everyone's very friendly, yeah, actually. Yeah. Too friendly? No. Not, not too friendly. But you can never be too friendly. If you've got a friendly face, people will come up and talk to you, even if you don't understand what they're saying. Really? Yes. Mm. It's great. It's okay. Fine. I went very high pitched there. Yeah, it's great. Oh, oh, okay. I like that. I like glass bottles too. It makes it taste a little bit better. Yeah. It'll give you that illusion that it does. I get that. When you drink Coke from a oh. plastic bottle compared to a glass well, bottle. Well, I actually think that's legit as well. I think that actually tastes better. Yes, it does. Mm. Maybe it's uh, with the oxidizing factor of the material. That, mm -hmm. Anyway, never mind. Truly. Uh, <laughs> truly, quite, quite. All right, let's get into the game number two. I'm not sure where I was going with that one. As uh, we have <laughs> uh, down to the bottom right-hand corner, it is our blue Zerg representing Team Liquid. It is Liquid Rat. Fantastic game number one. Great map for game number two as well. You know, you can play a similar style in this map. To the top left hand corner, we have our red Protoss looking to keep himself alive. It is my insanity's Pete Drogo. Looking tired. Wakey, wakey, mate. One more game, one more loss. Packing your bags. Actually, no, yeah, there's a there's an extra chance, right? There is, there is that Never extra mind. chance. Never mind. There is that extra chance, which is a very uncommon thing that we actually get here in the Intel Extreme yeah, Masters. Yeah, it's kind of like, it adds an interesting storyline to mm -hmm. it. You know, it's not a bad thing. It's not, not a, a bad, bad thing, thing at all, Calaris. No. no, I think it's a nice thing. It's great. All but right. Unless you're a fan of Rain, and then it's probably a bad thing. He's got a lot of fans, actually. He does have a lot of fans. <laughs> <yeah>. No. <laughs> But these players equally, likewise, here for the open bracket. It's a grueling open bracket, usually on day number one of the Intel Extreme Masters. And they are fighting for these top spots against some of the best in Europe. Yeah, look at this. We are seeing uh -oh. a, a drone go out to the map. Looks like it's going to take its further away base. And this overlord looking to scout a very early probe scout. Oh, or is he? Dum, dum, dum. Bum, bum, bum. Where, that is an interesting direction. They're going to potentially bump. Oh, he's checking the gold. Oh. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> he scouts it. Mine got. Oh, well, he saw that pretty quickly. He saw everything he needed to see. He didn't. Maybe he was hoping to get there to block it in time. Maybe not. That's... Maybe just looking to scout it. Either way, gives him great information this early on, so he can change his build up if he needs. Let's see what he wants to do there. Look at that. Teet Drogo, he's a he's clairvoyant, man. He has he's mind reading powers. That's yeah, what man. they're teaching them in France. That's why they've gotten so good. They're psychic. Telekinesis. The ability of foresight. I'm I'm so impressed. He's a far seer. Yeah, he is. Apparently. I wonder if he played Warcraft 3. Hmm. Uh, <laughs> you should ask Rotterdam about the far seer, mate. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. I heard so I didn't follow Warcraft 3, but I heard it wasn't very common to use. And then Certainly was not. He used it. He used it. He used yeah. it as his first hero. Yeah? And, well. What yeah. did you use? 
I was Night Elf. Okay, yes, yeah, I know that. Yeah. There's Moonglade, I know Moonglade, this. Moonglade, I'm Night Elf. I make dryads and druids of the claw. Okay, okay. And Demon Hunter. Oh, okay, Demon Hunter sounds... I was, uh, uh, oh, they called him Superman back then. Did they? Yeah, they did. Why Superman? Because he was so good. Yeah? He was so strong. Better than Blade Master? Uh, it's yeah. no, really. Blade Master was just in balance. Like, he's, he was the king, right? He was the king. Give Mr. Gruptor will tell me all about that time. Yeah, he's giving uh, claws of attack, and yeah. there you go. You have a party. You know, it's the most fun game ever. It's like playing a MOBA with the one hero. Oh. Wind walk all around the map, <laughs> killing everything you want. Oh, great, great. I do respect Rotterdam for going for the fast here, though. You know, he had his own style. He yeah. was the one player that did it, too. Sick. Kudos you, to you, Rotterdam. But then you make a dryad, and... You dispel his wolves, and what can you do? Is that it? That's <laughs> it. That, that was the. Well, that's, okay. that's the end of the story. <laughs> As we get Roach. onto this game, okay. Roach Warren down quite early. Yeah, maybe a little scared because he did get scattered out yeah. so early. Although, was the scout revealed? Maybe he's doing this aggressive. No, he's mm. only got one overlord on the way. Well, two, two, eight. two. Could very well be for sure. He's you know he's, he's built up a lot of gas right. behind this as well. Oh. Not a bad idea either, considering what we see from Petit Drogo so far. Yeah, maybe maybe a wave, maybe a, maybe a slight crash upon upon Ooh. the shore of Protoss. Look Ooh. at the front there. Look at the front door. Cybernetics Ooh. is so exposed to roaches. Mm. That is delicious, and may very well go down. Not the most solid of front uh, walls there. Yeah, tasty marshmallow of a cybernetic score here for the roaches that like to burn things and eat that. That could be uh, quite quite delightful for them. Here we go. Uh, maybe he's, this fast robot is going to be fixing for a quicker moral. We'll see what he wants to make out of that. It's going to be that war prism to start things off. So, wrong choice there. This could really come back to bite him as these roaches are nearly at the front door. No, nope. they're going to be. Unfortunately, for two this, sentries. I don't think that's not going to be enough. Make that three. Uh, Just kill the pylons. Look how exposed the pylons yeah. are. Two of them. You're going to have an unpowered base. That zealot. He's like, oh, I guess I won't do anything. <laughs> I'll just stand here and hold command because I can't do anything else. This, this is a bit brutal for him because that pylon to the top is going to underpower oh, this. No. Uh-oh. There's but not much you can do at this point. You're not going to have warp gate. You're going to have three sentries to defend against this. What else does he have? He doesn't even have a mothership core right now. I don't know, Moonglade. I think uh, Rhett's about to steal Petit Drogo's face and use it because this is this is not going very well for him at all. I don't know what movie you're talking about, mate. That sounds pretty messed up. <laughs> but uh, all that's left is uh, the warp gate. Uh, sorry, the the gateway. Well, that's gone. Or you can just work on the pylons, I guess. He's out of uh, out of force fields now. He oh, does no. have a, an immortal, but Run what can away. he do? Run away! This is a brilliant move by Rhett. This is really playing against Rhett's image usually, and he has done massive amounts of damage. 11 probes have gone down. Petit Drogo is on the ropes, and that is the face of defeat there, as Petit Drogo will GG out, and that will be Rhett 2-0. Team Liquid looking strong, looking strong. It's like the, yeah, that practice, uh, that boot camp did some wonders. Really fantastic play. Great decision making from Rhett in game two. Shows a very aggressive style. No drones that time around. Handsome devil as well. Fantastic stuff by him. Really, really well played. Again, you know, just slightly against his image. Look at him. Oh, what a smiley guy. What a handsome <laughs> fella. Can you hear me? Maybe. <laughs> That's what I'm hoping. <laughs> and uh, yeah, that will be Rhett doing very, very well for himself. So, got to hand it to him, though. Those were two solid games. Yeah, frustrating. Sort of frustrated face there from Petit Drogo. But uh, you know what? He's not out of it yet. He does have that last chance. Yes. That one last shot. He can't do it. I think he could. I definitely think he could. Um, I think he'd be going up against you, Thermal, for that one. Yeah, I, th I think you might be right there. Yeah, and if he that. is, and if he is, then that'll be quite the game itself, to be honest with you. I mean, two two players, or at least two people in positions where they th they're both rising up the ranks so so well. Oh no, actually, it's it's Rhett that goes on against you, Thermal, correct? Oh, and Petit Drogo is now eliminated completely. Aha! Uh -huh. If I recall, okay. so there you go. There we go. We figured it out. Yeah, yeah. So Rhett moves on to play up against you, Thermal. Okay. There you go. Yeah, we figured it out. Fantastic. It's so good. We're fine. Well done. All right, so we're going to head over to the analysis desk to hear some words from our Victor. Moving on, it is indeed Liquid Rhett. Thank you very much, Kolaris, as always. Congratulations to Rhett. Not through yet, but a good congratulations anyway. Nice win over there, Pedro over there. 
Thoughts coming into this? Tilo was mentioning when he played against Pedrogo, he sensed a bit of weakness in him today. Was that something you were feeling as well? Uh, I'm not entirely sure. Maybe a little bit. Uh, I, I felt the last attack he did was a little bit reckless. Maybe something he would not normally do. Um, but, you know, we play each other all the time on ladder. It's really, there's a lot of mind games. There's a lot of uh, strategies that we've already used on ladder and in other tournaments as well, like DreamHack. So, uh, I don't know, I think the last game he just got tricked a little bit. Uh, but now he can get some sleep. It's, uh, I don't know if you, <laughs> I don't know, if you know the head-to-head the -head record between the two of you now. Uh, overall, it's 3-0 in series and 6-0 in maps. It's uh, quite convincing, especially, I mean, the, the last time you played wasn't even that long ago. Uh, it's a good record to have against this type of player. Yeah, in tournaments it's going pretty well, but uh, he is very, very strong PVC, and I do have a lot of trouble actually when I get him on the ladder. So uh, I think I'm just getting the better end of the mind games uh, so far. I'm sure he's going to turn it around if we play more. Speaking of the uh, mind games there, just the roach sling timing off the gold base there. Clearly a very powerful build. I wanted to ask, was that at all a reaction to something you knew about his play? Is it something you also just consider as an option because the wall is so far out front on Terraform? Walk us through the decision there. Yeah, I definitely know about his style. He, he, he gets the Mothership Core very late sometimes when he, he's just mm -hmm. chrono boosting probes. So I knew it would be good because of that. And then also uh, he might want to be aggressive against the gold, so it would kind of counter that as well automatically. So I just felt like overall it had a decent percentage against a wide variety of builds. So that's why I just went for it. Really smart decision making there. I don't want to keep you too long, of course. You've got to go through to the uh, deciding match. And then uh, you do have a second life as well, even if you don't make it through that. So you've got to be feeling good now. I'm feeling great. I'm really glad I got to play uh, Uthermal again. I feel like the last two times I played CVT in tournaments, which was WCS and this one today, I, I just didn't reach the level that I normally reach. And uh, this time I'm going to go all out, try to show my best. Absolutely, I don't want to hold you back from anything right now. I feel like I'm, <laughs> we're holding him back from just launching towards you, Thermal. Well, uh, best of luck in that game. We're going to be watching it very, very closely and hope you can make it through. And of course, if Rhett isn't able to beat you, Thermal, he would go up against Bly. Of course, Bly is waiting for the loser of the next match to play for the third place decider, uh, or the group decider between the two of them. Thank you very much, Rhett, and hopefully speak to you again in a little bit here. Best of luck against you, Thermal. Uh, before we go into the commercial break, once again, going to remind you guys, if you're now just tuning in for the very first time or very earlier on, we have uh, lots of highlights and so on at plays.tv. You can check out a lot of the games that you've missed already, and it's also good for future notice if you are going to miss games tomorrow or the next day. They're all recorded over there. We'll be right back as Rhett takes on Uthermal in an all-out Dutch war.